Welcome to Toastmaster Time, the show that's got everybody talking. My name is Dr. Michelle Petticola, and I'm your host for this edition of Toastmaster Time. Like Toastmasters meetings, we have prepared speeches and then evaluate them to give the speakers feedback and to help them improve. To do that, we have our very own evaluator, Seema Giri. Seema, welcome to the show. Can you give us an overview of what we can expect for the show tonight? Michelle, we have a wonderful lineup tonight. We have Deborah Carol Walker, who's going to be talking to us about living in the present, being in the moment. Then we have Pat Griffin. She is going to give us an actual stand-up comedy routine. So I'm so excited and can't wait. Wow, that does sound exciting. Well, we'll be talking to you later. But right now, I want to introduce our first speaker, Brenda Carroll Walker. Brenda, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your Toastmasters career. When did you get started and why? I started in Toastmasters in 2011. Wow. I was in the midst of finishing up a career in finance and transitioning into finding something new. Yes. And I stumbled onto Toastmasters. Wow. And what did you like about Toastmasters? Well, now, I like the people. I belong to Lakeside Speakeasy Toastmasters group. And when I came, when I joined that group, the first day, actually, I should say, they were so friendly and very inviting. And I came back. Wow. I think I came back two or three times, and then I joined the group. How exciting. And, and speaking, you weren't afraid of speaking? Oh, yes, of course. Each time when I first started, I had to speak. I was so nervous. I would shake so much. But the friendly faces around the table as they were watching and encouraging me made me feel a little less nervous. So I stayed. I continued with my Toastmasters group, and I tell you, I decided to join and stay in Toastmasters and move into the district So level. what did that involve? That involved me being what, the uh, area director. I got to go out and oh, visit. Oh, you were an area director? Area oh. director. I get to go out and visit all these different clubs and see how they do, how they run their clubs, and give them pointers, of course. That was fun. And then, of course, I was able to be the division director. Wow. And I just finished that up this year. So I've had a wonderful time so far in Toastmasters. Well, I'm very excited to listen to your speech. Are you ready to give your speech? Yes, I am. So while you're getting ready, I'm going to tell the audience about your goals and objectives. Okay. So Brenda, Brenda is giving her speech from the Pathways Path Innovative Planning. And her speech is, uh, an icebreaker to write and deliver a speech from any topic to introduce herself. Our first speaker is Brenda Carroll Walker, living your life in the moment, living your life in the moment, Brenda Carroll Walker. I love living my life in the moment out loud so that people can see and hear me. I love encouraging people. And I believe that wherever we are in life, we leave something of ourselves. In the, in the places that we go to, the people that we come in contact with each day of our lives, we leave something of ourselves. Have you asked yourself ever, what is it that I'm leaving of myself? 
when I have contact with my family, when I have contact with friends or colleagues, just socializing. I would hope that you would think something positive is left behind in my daily dealing with the people I come in contact with. Fellow Toastmasters, I would like for you to think now about how you really interact in your daily living of life. Do you encourage people, let's say when you're working, when you're at work and someone has a problem, do you help by encouraging them? Do you inform? Are you showing them how to best transverse whatever is going on at the job. If that is what you're doing, then you are encouraging, you are inspiring, and you are informing and teaching. What I would like for you to do is to consider my method of living in the moment, the here and now, and getting and giving just as much as you get from your conversations and interactions with people. Living in the moment requires being encouraging. So I'm going to give you an example. One example, my nephew. Now, he wakes up in the morning, not an early person at all, but of course he has to go to work. He's not an early morning person and he will tell you that. So what is it that I do to try and get him up and out of the house in a cheery mood, ready to take on the day. What I will do is I'll get up with my cheery smile and my great disposition and say, nephew, it's time to wake up. Now this doesn't always work, but I endeavor to try as often as I can. Now, let's think about E, I, I, and T. That's what I've been saying, encourage, inspire, inform, and teach when necessary. Sometimes we may have an instance where we need to teach. We'll take John for instance. John works in a tech department. He has a lot that he has to deal with every day, keeping, making sure that he upgrades the system and stays on top of it. However, John is not a person who likes and deals with change very well. So what do we do? How can I encourage John to try? I can show by example. I can be inspiring by just getting in there and doing whatever it is that needs to be done to show John that this is not as intimidating, as challenging, whatever it is that he's having. Now, just in that moment, I've been able to be encouraging, inspiring, and informative, and to teach. Ladies and gentlemen, what I am saying here today is that I would like for you to take my method, my theory that E-I-I-T will work. I would like for you to take this, try it, encourage, inspire, inform, and teach when necessary. Take this, use it in your daily lives, and be assured that your world will expand. Seema, so tell me, what did you think about Brenda's speech? Brenda's speech was amazing. It was a real great example of living in the present. She had a really good acronym of E-I-I-T. You could tell she was a really well, uh, uh, an established speaker. She's been in Toastmasters for 12 years. And she gave us an acronym that would be easy to remember and take away. Encourage, inform, inspire, and teach. Thank you for your comments, Seema. We'll be talking to you later. Right now, I want to introduce our next guest and speaker, Pat Griffin. Pat, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, oh, we're delighted. So tell us a little bit about your Toastmasters experience. What club do you belong to? Chamber Chatters in Pleasanton, California. Awesome. It's at the Chamber of Commerce. It's at noon on Wednesdays. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And, and what made you decide to join Toastmasters? I wanted to teach children, or not children, high school kids. And I hadn't been in school for a long time or teaching for a long time. So I thought if I boned up on things, because I could start a speech, but I couldn't seem to finish one. So I wanted to go out and talk to high school kids. Wow. So how long have you been a Toastmaster? Well, I'm not very good at math, but I think it was about 25 years. 25 <laughs> so, years? It must have changed there. a lot in that time, no? You know, just recently it's changed, but actually it, it has stayed very much the same. Uh, this total encouragement, just practice, 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 and you, you have to get better, yeah. just whatever you do. So, Pat, I understand you are a stand-up comedian. Yeah. That's amazing. Do, so were you a stand-up comedian before you joined Toastmasters or after? Not at all. We had a stand-up comedian join our club, John DeCoven. He joined our club and he started taking a few of us over to do open mics. And of course that was total failure at the beginning, but eventually I started getting a little bit better. And uh, then I got very serious about it. I wanted to learn how to do it. So, so I did. So how does stand-up comedy differ, or how is it like humorous speaking in Toastmasters speeches? Well, take 25 years of humorous speech contests and reduce it down to five minutes of stand-up, and you've got what happens. You just have to get rid of all your jewels, your special expressions and everything, and shorten it, because you want to laugh faster oh. in stand-up. That's the whole idea. Is to laugh faster. Yeah. The, the audience is less uh, patient. Exactly. Interesting. And sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't. <laughs> you know? uh, so do you have any tips for Toastmasters like me who have trouble bringing comedy or humor into our speeches? Well, there are certain formulas mm -hmm. that you can do, like the formula of three, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar with already. You take two items and then a third one that's exaggerated and has a twist to it uh -huh. and that that's always funny and if you call back to something that's been mentioned previously at a meeting people will laugh at that and let's see what else if you tell a story and skip something that everybody can fill in they're so happy that they did that uh -huh. and they it laugh. makes them laugh it makes that's them laugh. great so are you ready to give your speech? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, All right. we're very excited to, to hear you. Take a moment to get yourself ready while I share with the audience what your speech objectives are. Thank you. So Pat is, be, is going to be giving her speech from the Advanced Speaker Manual, Humorous Speaking. And her objectives are to bring in exaggeration and body language and also to be entertaining. Pat Griffin, stand up and laugh or cry. Stand up and laugh or cry, Pat Griffin. I just brushed over from the senior center. The seniors and the comics all walk around asking the same question. How much time do I have? And when they give me the light, I hope it's not at the end of the tunnel. Now, I, today was Tai Chi Day at, at the center. And you know, Tai Chi is a martial art. So don't hesitate to ask. I'd be happy to walk you to your car after the show. As long as the assailant assails in slow motion, we've got this. Now, there are positions in Tai Chi, though actually I don't know very much about Tai Chi because Honorable Instructor speaks only Chinese. It's vowels coming at you. If you grunt, you've said something. I don't know what, but something. Now, there are positions in, Chinese, in Tai Chi. You spread your legs and there is Mabu. There is Kung Bu, and there is, here's a hard one, there is Chi Bu, and if you fall down, it's a Boo Boo. <laughs> now, Mabu is the one that concerns me.
because you spread your legs and you squat. And I worry. Now there's this lady right in front of me doing exactly the same thing. What if she farts? <gasps> I'd say she just bought a vowel. Now languages have long been a source of ennui for moi because I was plucked from Berkeley High and placed in a school near Paris. I didn't speak a word of French. It was failure. I flunked English as a second language. They wanted me to translate Shakespeare into French. I couldn't translate it into English. It was an experimental school. They had boys and girls together for the very first time in France. Head of security, Madame Lafarge, I can picture her now, perched on her bicycle behind a bush like a cop behind a billboard. Watching, watching for lovers. So, Madame, I don't know, I was late for class that day, and so I took a shortcut through the forest and I tripped over this couple on the ground just as Madame blew her whistle and she screamed, menage à toi. <laughs> Is that on my schedule? I, I'm here to learn. Now, my French friends named their dog Patsy after me. And they would say, tais-toi Patsy, which means shut up Patsy. And they would say, no, Patsy, which means outside Patsy. So Patsy and I shut up and went outside. I followed her because she understood French. Now, I, languages are a problem for me. I you know, tell this, but it's, I learned French the hard way and tonight so will you. It's all in the mouth. You want your mouth open, your lips forward, and wet. Don't worry about spitting on people. It's part of the language. <laughs> now, with your mouth open, your lips forward, and wet, repeat after me. Uh! I'm thinking you're saying that. Uh! Wow. Anyway, I've forgotten my mind. I forget things. I, I, I forget people's names. I forget, th I, I'm gonna be 80 in a couple of months because I'm 78 right now and the math part's growing. But, okay, I can't, I'm sorry I'm having a little trouble tonight because we've had a tragedy in our family. Bambi killed my Volvo. It was in the dark of night to the left of Livermore when this deer flew out of the bushes into my headlights, bam, onto my car. That's the sound she made when she hit the car. That's why they call her Bambi. Why? Why did she do it? Well, she missed the safety committee meeting. Instead, she went to the stag party. And that's where she met Buck. Buck and Bambi decided to play chicken. You know what chickens do, they cross the road. Well, that's what I, don't ask me why, they, that's what they do. So Buck and Bambi are racing through the forest and they're running and running and running and running and they get to the road and the buck stops here. Bambi passes the buck. And now my Volvo's in hospice. Allstate wants to pull the plug. I'm sure some of you know that Volvo is the Swedish word for expensive repairs. And the blue book value of this car is worth less than the value of the blue book. I don't know, it's, the, I love that car. I took care of that car. Well, there was the time that I broke the dipstick. A dipstick is what you use to measure the oil in the car. But bicycles don't have them. And it was out in the middle of Nevada. Nevada is this vast expanse that you have to cross to get to the world. It was, and I broke it. What to do? And the, 
we're out in the middle of nowhere with a broken dipstick and the business end of it is still down in the hole. So I called the Volvo dealer and this is what he said. Send me a dipstick pic. Now that killed in San Francisco. Okay. Now, I forget things. I forget names. There, there, this woman's coming toward me. I have to introduce you. I, I know her dog's name. I know where she lives. She is my sister. It'll come. It'll come. And then I lose things. I lose my keys, my phone, grandchildren. Thank God I found my phone. I lost it in the flannel sheets. I found it in the washing machine. And, and we did find, what's his name, my grandson. He was in the dryer. But Now, what's his name? I don't know. It, I, I'm known as the cheap grandma. The other grandma bought our grandson tickets to a UCLA basketball game in Maui. I bought that kid a shirt. It was on sale, 40% off. It was $14.99. So I take it over to the register, and the young man says, lady, if you open a charge account today, the store will give you $15. Now it's $14.99, and they're going to give me $15. Do we have a mathematician in the room? It's a profit. And then the latest thing, the other grandma paid for the bar mitzvah in Tel Aviv. Oh, I gave him a rosary. Now, what were we talking about? Oh, my sweetie, of course. I married a Marine. I married him for his body. I found out later he could read. But the Marine Corps sent him off to war. Well, he comes back a very light sleeper. But I feel totally safe sleeping next to this trained killer who wakes up easily. Now one night, I'm sound asleep and suddenly he leaps out of bed. He pulls on his pads. He runs out, chases some guy over the back fence and he comes back in and he says, we had a peeping Tom. Oh. He wasn't looking at you. Why not? Now, a lot of stuff happened between then and now. And today, we are the proud parents of some old people. Who knew they'd live that long or whatever? But they're gone now, and my, just my sweetie and I. And we're planning lots of trips, trips to the cardiologist, to the ophthalmologist, and for our bones, the paleontologist. Kaiser is our travel agent. Where else can you get a room for an hour? With a little bed with stirrups. But alas, we had a bad thing happen. My sweetie fell on his head. And since that day, our home has been a revolving door of caregivers from all over the world. All men. Now, my sweetie will tell you that he doesn't need a caregiver, but I do. Hercules was my favorite. And then there was Francis from Fiji. He was a rugby player who liked to play on the rug. This one would be perfect. Uh, there was, well, my sweetie will tell you that he is being held under house arrest while I am enjoying my empire of erotic, exotic staff. And he really hates the 90-minute sponge bath. But I like to be clean. Now, fellas, I have some advice for you. Be nice to her, because someday she's going to be in charge. I control the money. I control the pills. One for you, one for me. One, two for you, one, two, three for me. But best of all, 
after 50 years of marriage. Aha! I control the TV remote. Thank you. Right. Well, Simo, what did you think about that uh, presentation? <laughs> Michelle, I still st can't stop laughing. <laughs> she was amazing, and I forgot I was supposed to evaluate her. <laughs> She she had all the, the all the tricks in there. Really she funny. Had all the tricks, and you could tell she's such a master. Uh, and I think there were times when we thought she might have forgotten her lines, but I think that was just part of the act. It was just amazing. It was very well structured, very easy to follow. And when you're sitting in the audience, especially for a stand-up comic a routine, a show, that's what you need. It was very lighthearted. It was very well structured, and she used things from her daily life. You know, when I have been preparing speeches and need to add humor, I'm racking my brains, where do I get, where do I find the funny things? And it's in your everyday life. So it was a well lesson learned during her speech. What I would offer as a stretch goal for Pat to think about is maybe use the stage a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know this is a, a limited area over here, but if she moved around a little bit, I think it would have added a little bit more variety. That sounds like a really good uh, stretch goal. And tell me, uh, have you been able to incorporate humor into your own speeches? Have you had that, found that to be a challenge, or how have you been doing with that? Well, you know, it's funny you ask that question. I, I didn't think I was intentionally adding, but luckily people had been laughing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I've really learned today how to intentionally add. Um, I keep teasing my daughter, like, maybe I should be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> wow. And she's like, Mom, I don't think so. But, uh, yeah, so it's really easy to now for me to see how I can add humor intentionally into, into my your speech. speech. Mm -hmm. And uh, what other things did you notice about her speech that you might bring into your own speaking? To carry small props. I loved her purse, and the, and um, you don't see gloves anymore. No, you don't. So that was really great. Just small props and um, a little purse with with small things that can really add richness to your to your routine. Well, thank you very much, Seema. The uh, our show is just about over. That is our show for tonight. Thank you for joining us for Toastmaster Time. If you would like to have more information about our show, go to our website at toastmaster.com. Not Toastmaster, toastmastertime.com. And the sponsor for this show is District 57. If you would like to have more local information, go to d57tm.org. If you would like to have more inf general information about Toastmasters, or you would like to find out about a club near you, go to Toastmasters International at toastmasters.org. I would like to thank our crew and our volunteers at the Media Center for making this show possible, and also our speakers, Brenda Carol Walker, Pat Griffin, and of course, our evaluator, Seema Geary. For Toastmaster Time, I'm Dr. Michelle Petticola. We invite you to join Toastmasters and keep talking. <laughs>